Merry mid-December, YouTube. I'm not even sure what day it is, but it's getting close to the Christmas time, and even though I'm working still most of the time, you still lose track of oh, what friggin' day is it, and what's happening tonight, and tomorrow, and the next day, and uh, what's going on in my life. So, yes, the holidays, right? So, uh, I am ready to do my next uh, toy unboxing, which is going to be another Autobot Transformer today. But... Before I do that, I thought I would just take you on a short, quick little tour through this room that I do uh, my toy reveals in, because this is the one room in the house that me and my son James decorate for Christmas. Uh, all the rest of the house my wife does, because she's very particular about things, and so um, we don't even go there. So, <laughs> um, so this room is the one that we do, and we're allowed to do the way we want, and uh, she's not allowed to move anything. That is the rule. Now, I don't know whether she does or not, but. Hopefully we'll see, we'll notice if she does so. But uh, we're dudes, so we don't really care. So uh, anyways, before uh, I get started on who I've got down here, let's have a look around here. So we'll start with the couch. Nothing special going on there, that's just where I sit. Uh, I thought it would be um, cool to show, the, if you can't see it in my videos, I think you can just see the bottom of it, but there's a, uh, a Transformers print by uh, an artist named Alex Milne, which uh, kind of blows my mind away. I wish I could draw things like that. Uh, but I can't, so um, I like to look at other people's that can do that sort of thing, so there's that. Anyways, there's not much going on here, just the uh, a few little knickknacks and whatnot, um, and a tree that we put on the Skylanders uh, Superchargers platform. Yeah, the uh, little books and games down there. That's a blanket. We put it on those uh, workout bars so that the cat would have a little fort, and instead of going under it, she tried to climb on top, and fell through and it was all very hilarious and I wish I'd had my camera going at the time because it was something to see. Um, there is James's giant stocking which pff, let's just say a lot of stuff goes in there so um, so all that that side of the, the room is pretty uh, tame but then we've got our little moose guy some Star Wars dudes with this R2 with the Santa hat on and such a little Christmas plate down there a whole bunch of other stuff this little guy, this rabbit here, he's been around since I was a kid and he used to be able to push this thing and he would do all sorts of different Christmas songs, but uh, that wore out a few years ago, so that no longer works. Um, lots of snow globes that play like little music box type sounds, which we had like all five of them going at once today when we were actually doing this and it was pretty funny. Yeah, more snow globes and such. Look at this one. This is a Santa like terror drop thing. <laughs> uh, I just started going on those a few years ago and now I love them. I was always terrified of them, but now I'm not. Yeah, just some Noel and whatnot. And then here we have the tree. Oh, and there's that if you didn't see that in the video. It's uh, Santa uh, tic-tac-toe. So here is, we have two trees. This is the old crappy one. Some of the lights won't work anymore, but you'll see a lot of cool stuff on there. Even Christmas doesn't escape our love of pop culture and sci-fi and fantasy. There's, you'll see Transformers, lots of Star Wars stuff, hockey stuff. There's even a little Beavis down there um, doing his Cornholio pose. A couple G.I. Joe dudes. And a, there's BB-8 there, I forgot about him. But the best is on top of the tree. You will see. That's my religion right there. So that was the tour of James and I's Christmas room. Uh, the rest of the house, I'm not even gonna show you. It's a Christmas threw up all, all for the rest of it. And uh, yeah, we're not even gonna go there. So let's get started on today's unboxing, which happens to be one of my favorite characters as a kid, the Autobot Smokescreen. Smokescreen. Um, was like, he was a very affable character who everybody got along with well. He was uh, very well liked, uh, quick to crack a joke and stuff, but he always had ulterior motives. He was the Autobots uh, spy and master of misdirection. Uh, his weapons included like, um, well, a smoke screen that he would shoot out of his tailpipes that would confuse all the Decepticons and they couldn't see anything. And his weapons weren't like blasters or anything. They would be like uh, guns that would like 
fry circuitry and stuff like that. So it never, they di didn't do any damage, they just caused chaos and misdirection and, and stuff like that. To that effect, Optimus Prime also used Smokescreen to not spy on his own troops, but listen to them in their concerns about what was going on within the Autobot camp and report back to Optimus on, on where things stood with everybody because, uh, because Optimus felt that being the leader, they weren't going to come and tell him things and you know there's that, that gap between the worker and the boss, right? So. Um, so that was kind of Smokescreen's uh, role within the Autobots. And he was one of those guys like, uh, who did I do last time, Trax and um, who was the other one I just did? I can't remember, but they were both Autobots that weren't in that original run of Autobot vehicles, but kind of came along a little bit later and kind of the second wave of characters that entered the fray. So he was one of those guys. Um, so that being said, that's pretty much all there is to him. Um, let's get a look at his, uh, what his original toy looked like. So as you can see, if you are a fan of the Transformers G1 and the toys, you'll see that he was, uh, the same mold that, uh, Prowl, Blue Streak, uh, there was a Silver Streak? I never got the difference between Blue Streak and Silver Streak, but even Jazz kind of had the same mold, even though his styling was a bit different. He was a Porsche, whereas these guys were, you know, Nissan Datsun type vehicles, but the same kind of mold. Um, but uh, this is the new and updated uh, Masterpiece Edition, so let's open it up and see uh, what it looks like. So, here we go. Here he is, the Autobot smokescreen. Look at that beautiful, beautiful machine. Not too many weapons or anything. Some guys come with weapons and then uh, other things like a little human character that comes with them or a little device or whatever, you know. Uh, Ironhide came with a whole pile of stuff. But uh, this one's pretty simple. Yeah. And they always come with their little uh, masterpiece collector's card thing, which is cool because I love the artwork, as you may have been able to tell by now. So here's the instructions. Uh, this guy's a lot smaller than some of the other guys that I've been doing, so hopefully the transformation process won't be as painful as the other ones. Um, but I guess Trax was around the same size as this guy, and he was a real pain, so, but uh, we'll see. We'll see very soon. So opening this up, tape. One of those shoulder mounted things, maybe. There he is. Look at that. The number 38. All sorts of decals and such. And of course, the Autobot symbol prominent. Very cool, these toys. I Every time one shows up in the mail, I get so excited. So, and I'm saving the best for last, believe you me. So, so here he is. And uh, now, let's. Uh, make as quick of an attempt as possible that I can to transform it. So, as you can see, this here is a beautiful, beautiful likeness of Smokescreen's Generation 1 appearance. Uh, as I said, it didn't come with much. Uh, his, his regular blaster and then his two shoulder-mounted uh, disruptor cannons, I think they're called. And then he had two other blaster things, but the, the instructions didn't even say where to put them, so I'm not sure exactly what they are. Um, but, uh, yeah, everything on it is amazing. Uh, the paintwork, the transformation process. It even had the uh, the classic hip swivel 
which is a, um, a classic G1 original toy move. Uh, so many of the toys had that uh, in their transforming arsenal. Um, as I said earlier, Smokescreen, as a, as a kid, was one of my favorite characters and so I went fishing around inside my old box of beat up transformers and lo and behold look who I found smokescreen <laughs> now he may look like he's missing some things and indeed he is so you can see uh, all of his roof and back uh, roof part back window and everything all that stuff is broken off the 38s are gone uh, the Autobot symbol everything's gone this thing got heavily played with uh, so that was his G1 toy and um, this one I don't have to do a time-lapse video to transform it because it's so super simple that's that's the difference between the old toys and the new ones is that uh, they're more elaborate in, in more ways than one right so um, so yeah all you do open the doors pull the feet down arms come out and twist that comes down and then here we go this was a classic locking mechanism and then boom the hip swivel pull the legs apart Give it, son of a it's a little stiff with age but they do just come apart I swear oh my god We'll see. So, the reason he's missing some parts is th this is was a problem with all of these um, characters that had there. I had to turn it first. The characters that had this same mold is this part here that pops up to be the head. This is where the main part of the roof, the front windshield, and the roof was attached, and it was just this tiny little strip of plastic here that held on this big plastic part. And just with overuse of the toys, um, it always seemed to break off. And then for the back part of the roof, the back window, they were right here. These little parts move back and forth. So when it was in the car, it was just the spoiler in the roof. And then when it transformed, it would become the legs. So these would kind of lean down and the back roof part would be the front of his legs. That would cover it. It's not just this stupid piece of black plastic. So with all that movement and back and forth and, and stuff, uh, they just they just wear out and, and broke down with time. So this this same thing happened with Jazz, Prowl, Blue Streak, Silver Streak, all the cars that had that same kind of um, mold from from G one. So, but uh, yeah, that's it. That is G one, the original G one smokescreen, compared to the new one. So as you can see, there's a fair uh, size difference and. Uh, and what I like about these masterpiece toys is that the size difference on these new toys are so consistent to the original cartoon and so drastic. Like um, Smokescreen here and, and uh, Trax are probably about the same size. I think Smokescreen actually might be a little taller than Trax. But then you get Ironhide who's like way up here, right? So I can't wait to see what uh, some of the last ones I'm going to do, how tall they are. So um, I'll leave you in suspense with that. But uh, yeah, that's... Uh, I love these things, they're fantastic. So, in conclusion, that is the gist of Smokescreen, both what he was all about, as I told you about earlier, and uh, what his new toy is about, as well as what the old one was about. So, um, I hope to be back with more of these sooner rather than later. I always have to wait for like a, a nice bright day for, the, for all the natural light through the skylights and stuff because um, the low light in here and stuff just doesn't work so I can't do it during the weekday of course because I'm at work and then when I get out at five o'clock it's already dark so uh, it has to be a weekend during the day and you know Christmas time we're gonna be busier than normal so um, I don't know exactly when I'm gonna get to my next one but uh, I do hope to get it to it sooner rather than later if I don't have it done before Christmas I wish everybody a Merry Christmas Happy Holidays all that nonsense and uh, at this point I'd also like to make um, a recommendation I know I only have seven subscribers so uh, and I don't know how regularly anybody watches my videos but one, one of the inspirations for doing these toy reveals is a youtuber that I've been following for the past number of months uh, her name is Laura Legends and she's Canadian and I believe from everything I've been able to to just the videos I've watched I believe she's on the West Coast somewhere but um, watching her videos like I highly recommend to watch her channel it's fantastic uh, when you do watch her at first, you'll notice, oh, this chick is super hot, right? 
But then you watch her videos and you're like, oh my God, like she does all these toy reveals. She loves Jurassic Park and, and uh, He-Man and stuff like that. So she has all these toy reveals and P.O. box openings and stuff like that. And everything she does is so cool. And I wish I had a collection like hers. <laughs> but, um, and then you'll also, the longer you watch her, you'll realize that she is like so funny and so smart and uh, obviously very talented because her videos are fantastic. They're so entertaining and fun to watch. And uh, so yeah, so I just thought I'll, I'll post a link to her channel in, in my description here. Um, I may not do that right away because doing everything from my phone, I always find it takes me so much longer to figure stuff out than if I'm just like on a desktop or something like that. But I will try and post a link in, in the bottom of this video to her channel and uh, a subscription to her will not be a waste of time, believe me. So um, yeah, that's all for now. And uh, until then, transform and roll out.